Welcome to part two of solving absolute value inequalities. In part two, we're actually going to be writing absolute value inequalities from compound inequalities. As a side note, this is why I get nothing accomplished while I'm making these videos. Don't worry, they're just playing, even though they look like they're not. All right, as I said, we're going to be writing absolute value inequalities from the compound inequalities. So I'm going to use the first easy examples that I did in part one to show you. Here, this are, these are both less thans. This is an and. So we know with and we have to use a less than or a less than or equal to in our absolute value inequality. So since these were both less thans, we know that my symbol is going to be a less than. And remember, we took whatever was in between there and dropped it in the absolute value. So before, when we were working forwards, writing the compound inequality, we took whatever was in the absolute value and put it in between. Now we're taking whatever is in between and dropping it in the absolute value. And we're taking the positive answer. So the negative 3 is less than x is less than 3 is the absolute value of x is less than 3. So again, the symbol stays the same and we use the positive. Whatever's in between the two symbols is in between the absolute value symbol. All right, let's do an or. So for the or, we know the or has to be, if it's an or, it has to be a greater than or greater than or equal to. These are both not or equal to's, so we know we're gonna be using the just greater than symbol. So we take the greater than symbol, the positive, and when we were writing the compound inequality, we took whatever was in the absolute value symbol and put it equal, sorry, greater than the positive. So we're going to take, going in reverse, whatever is greater than the positive and put it in the absolute value symbol. So let's do two more examples. This is an or, so we know that it's going to be a greater than or greater than or equal to. In this case, it's a greater than. We're going to take our positive, plop it in there, and whatever it is on the other side of the greater than right here is going to be whatever is in our absolute value symbol. And again, all we're doing is working backwards. We were given this in part one, and we had to write the compound. Now it's in reverse. So here I know it is a less than, so it's an and. Since it's an and, it's going to be a less than. So we take whatever is in the middle and put it in the absolute value symbol. We're going to take the less than and the positive. Now let's try going from a graph. This is actually going to be a good review for how to write a compound inequality from a graph as well because you need to know how to do this. The first thing you need to remember is, is it going to be an and or an or? Since these are arrows are going in opposite directions, we know it's going to be an or. And then just write the inequality for each part. So this part right here, we know it's going to be a less than or equal to because the circle is filled in. So x is less than or equal to a negative 3. This is going to be a greater than or equal to because the circle is filled in and the arrow is going to the right, so x has to be greater than or equal to 3. So the whole inequality, x is less than or equal to negative 3, or x is greater than or equal to 3. These individual parts could be reversed. You could have put this one in the front and this one in the back, as long as you have that word or in the middle. After you have the compound inequality, it's like what we did on the last page. First look to see, are these numbers opposites? If they are 3 and negative 3, you have to think, okay, is it going to be, am I going to use the less than or equal to or the greater than or equal to in my absolute value? Since this is an or, we know it's going to be the greater than or equal to. That is something you need in notes. It's something you need on your cheat sheet. The or is always the greater than or greater than or equal to. We're going to use the positive number and we're going to take whatever is on the other side of this inequality and put it in the absolute value symbols. So you went from the graph to the compound inequality to the absolute value inequality. All right, second example. We know this is going to be an and compound inequality because they're connected. 
So we know that x is going to be between two numbers. It equals those numbers as well, so we're going to use the less than or equal to's, and it's between negative 3 and 3. So what I see here is that these are opposites, so I know that the number is going to be the, th the 3, the positive 1, it's less than, it's an and, so I know that my ine absolute value inequality is going to be a less than or equal to. And I take whatever is in between here and I drop it in the absolute value symbols. Alright, and lastly, um, I'm ha I have the steps written here because every other one that we've dealt with so far had the end numbers as their opposites. But what happens if the end numbers are not the opposites? You can still write the compound inequality to get the absolute value inequality. So first, we're going to write the compound inequality. I know it's an and, so I know it's going to be less than, and it's going to be also or equal to because of these closed in circles. So I'm going to write, and let's do it right here, I think. x is less than, and it's between 1 and 7. OK, so there's my compound inequality. Then I need to find the number that is halfway in between the endpoints because you want to find a number, this magic number, that's going to allow these numbers to be opposites. So halfway in between, and I'll do it like this so you can see, halfway in between is 4. This is our magic number. Okay, so 4 is our magic number. We're going to subtract that number from all parts of the in compound inequality. So I'm going to subtract 4, subtract 4, subtract 4. Remember there are three parts. Three parts. So now I have 1 minus negative 4, which is negative 3, is less than. This part right here says x minus 4. And this part right here says 3. And voila, these end parts, these end numbers, are now opposites. So we can write it as an absolute value inequality. So we do that by first looking, is it an and or an or? It's an and. So we know that we're going to be using the less than or the less than or equal to. Since these are less thans, it's going to be a less than. We know that we always use the positive endpoint, so my positive is 3, and this is the part you need to remember, this whole thing in the middle. In the middle of the inequality symbols, right here, they're in between the inequality symbols, this whole part is what we're dropping in our absolute value symbol. So this gets dropped in here, x minus 4. So this graph, if we needed to write a compound inequality for it, we would have stopped at this first part here. But since we wanted an absolute value inequality, it's the absolute value of x minus 4 is less than 3. So to, just to recap, first you needed to find, to write the compound inequality, and you need to know how to do that for your assessment as well. You found the point halfway in between to help us get to endpoints that were opposites. You subtracted that number from all of the parts, and then you went to the absolute value inequality. Thanks for watching.